Yes, yes, yes. Clint Stoker sent me a copy of Downcast. Clint Stoker, of course, has a YouTube channel called Sweetcast. And uh, I thought I backed this, but I guess I forgot. And uh, he was good enough to just say, look, I want to send you one anyway. And thank goodness for that. So I'm going to open this up. Uh, he uh, looks like he used the same kind of uh, mailer that comic skaters like to use. I think it's called a Gemini. And we're going to find out what's in here. And yeah, Gemini Mailer. This looks good. This showed up in nice shape. And inside we've got Downcast. Is this a different cover than the than the one that I saw? This looks like uh Yeah, this is a different cover. Uh in the back. All right, let me open this up. Oh, this is pretty exciting. Mm, got something loose in there. Uh, downcast sticker that looks pretty good uh, a lot of little extras here backing board here's the print yeah this is just beautiful artwork here uh, a card looks like a trading card very good and then a sweet cast comics uh, bookmark it says thank you uh, okay, so first impressions of the book are a very, very nice print job. I love this. I love the way uh, the figures are shiny uh, and the book itself is matte. Um, this is a good effect. I, I don't think it's a, an expensive effect, so but it's uh, it's a lot for uh, for what you pay for it. Like the effect is really, really pleasing. And um, on the back, uh, Clint is listening to people. He's putting, look, this is uh, what the book is about here. Uh, very, very cool. All right, I'm going to read this, and I'll get back to you with uh, with a review. Hello. <laughs> hey, everyone, it's Ethan Van Skyver, and available right now for a limited 10-day campaign, a second chance at the Cyberfrog Blood Honey Salamandroid Chromium variant. I only have 800 left over, and they're going quick. Also, if you missed out on the 1998 and Amphibionics Ashcan 2-pack, those are available for a limited time uh, as well. Go over, follow the link in the description, go over there and check it out. And uh, thanks very much. All right, everyone, I'm back having just read Downcast by Clint St You like how I did that? Downcast by Clint Stoker. I cast it down. Uh, and uh, yeah, what can I tell you? Um, this is, first of all, let me just start out with this. Look at this cover by Matt Weldon. Matt Weldon is an extraordinary talent talent like his is rare there are a lot of comic book artists in the world a lot of people who will draw a comic book for you matt weldon who does a book called punchline is extraordinary i love this piece of artwork it's extremely evocative look at her she's like what do you want from me i want this that's what i want he's like yo uh you're looking for something yeah i want your cool uh hover bike i like that these people look like ordinary uh youngsters but they're youngsters. That's that's Boomer right there. That's Boomer speak. But they're in, in extraordinary circumstances. Clearly, they have super-powered gadgets, and they are sitting on the edge of this hovering... Uh, I guess it's a building or a piece of machinery or something. Whatever. It looks really, really cool. Now, uh, like I said, artists like Matt Weldon are rare. I love the way he draws the, the folds, the wrinkles in the pants here with negative space. Uh... Uh, it's just it's great it's so fun to look at his line work look at the look at the negative space he employs in, in drawing hair you know he doesn't draw every hair he just kind of leaves it open it's he's he's so good he's just so good uh it makes me uh long uh for this book to be drawn by matt weldon and i'll, I'll say that at the outset the the fantastic cover and i believe like i said this is a variant the interior artist did do his own cover as well, uh, and I'm I like this one. I, I prefer this one. Um, you know, this is uh, this is just a really really nice looking book, and it, it's going to look good on my shelf. Uh, all right, so let's just crack it open here. Clint Stoker, writer, uh, Ignacio Lazaro, artist. I don't know him. I've never I've never spoken to him. Clint did uh, autograph the interior here. Uh, in a in a dying sh uh, silver sharpie. Oh my God, dude! I feel you. I feel you. Um, you know, and I, I this is really nice. He thanked Peter Samedi. Uh, he thanked me, which was extraordinary. I really appreciate that. And Stephanie Stoker, I, that's his wife. One presumes. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, that's 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 great. This is your opportunity to sort of take control. Clint is clearly the voice of this comic book. Clint uh, is the man behind this comic book. He is the dude, and uh, he's hired an artist. Sure, it looks like the artist is is a work for hire situation. Uh, this is his project, and and I think we can look at it uh, that way. Uh, his art. Oh, look at these. Uh, He's got two little pinups here on the opening page, which kind of confusing. Kind of confusing that you know we've got these two little miniature pinups as soon as we turn the page and we want to be into the story, but they're nice. Uh, Tim uh, Tim Learman and uh, Ted Ted Lehman, who is uh, awesome, uh, provided two pieces of artwork here, and I think this is what the trading card was. So the story uh, the story is about a futuristic city that uh, floats. It's called Strata. It's floating uh, 32,000 feet in the air. Um, imagine spitting on the people below you from that height. That would be, uh, that would be nice. Uh, we've got some criminals that we meet right away. Uh, the artwork uh, reminds me of the artwork reminds me of Batman Year One. A little bit, little bit of it's like Dave Mazzucchelli style. I mean, it's certainly not as sophisticated as Dave Mazzucchelli, uh, but that's the kind of feeling that you get you go okay i'm going to uh, i'm in for some very simplistic um brush strokes some very simple artwork uh not a lot of details going on here uh, i'll say this about the artist I, I don't like the way he draws faces uh his faces um are uh well uh they're not they're not well drawn and they don't make me want to they don't they don't make me like these people uh unlike this like this makes me like these people um, this doesn't, I don't know what this, this scritchy scratchy stuff, we used to call it scritchy scratchy stuff in the 90s, like what is this? Uh, you've got uh, hard black lines here, hard black shadow, and then just kind of weak pullouts that uh, just really look strange. And I mean, the guy's inking his own work, I would say at the, at the very least uh, he needs to not ink his own work. Um, Clint's story is he gets a lot done. I don't know how many pages is is uh, is this a forty eight page book? He gets a lot done in forty eight pages. This is a, a heavy, uh, deep story about a brother and a sister uh, who um, uh, encounter corruption in the sci fi floating city and uh, obtain this gravity uh, defying weapon and become the uh, the center of. Uh, you know, what would you say? Organized crime of, of, of uh, politicians, of criminals, who, uh, who all uh, who all want uh, this uh, this weapon here. See these piranhas? They come into play later. Um, I I read the book and it, it was a good long read. I mean, it took me forty minutes to read this, and that is uh, you know, and I guess that's a good sign. Um, but I'll, I will say this because I'm mostly an artist. As I flip through it again, if you said, uh, what, what's the memorable image that you have from, from this book? Uh, I'll say, I don't have one. Uh, the story is in my head uh, of what I just read. I, you know, I, 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 you know, kind of happened like a TV show. And this does read kind of like a TV show. Um, but I, there's, you know, from an artist standpoint, uh, there's, there's nothing that has, that's in, the, see what I mean? There's nothing in this book that I'm ever going to remember visually. Uh, and that's too bad because uh, it, we really do kind of need to see these two ordinary people uh, shown in an extraordinary way. And I don't mean, uh, I don't necessarily mean that, you know, they need to be overpowered looking. No, no, no. I'm, I'm quite fine with, with this, that with just regular attractive young people, but just regular people. Uh, I just need to see more. Uh, this book is about defying gravity. I need to see some more extraordinary angles. I need to see some more memorable panels. Uh, this is what passes for a, pla a splash page. This is a splash page. Uh, you know, you get through this book and there are, uh, you know, six panel pages. Uh, on, on almost every page, you know, Clint's writing six panel grid. Uh, but, but, you know, he really is kind of using up his space to tell a story so when we get a splash page it's it's very very rare and this is what we get this is our hero shot uh this is not this is not good enough in fact 
this splash page is the weakest image in the entire book. I mean, I want to see as this woman uh, jumps off of the building with her gravity-defying orb, I want to see... Uh, I want to see her take up the entire page. I want to see a way more interesting perspective uh, than this. This single one shot, the probably the weakest um, choice that a, an artist could have made um, for for this shot. Uh, I, I, you know, and she looks. She, she just doesn't. This, this, this isn't this. And I, again, I, I understand that you know not everybody can be Matt Weldon. Um, but uh, you know just for the artists out there and even for Clint Clint send this back you know I understand that you're paying uh, uh, the artist and everything and the artist is working hard and you gave him a lot of work to do and I sympathize uh, but this is your book and you're paying for it it's a little bit like going to a me uh, going to a nice restaurant and paying a lot of money and your food's over salted you know as a as a comic book artist, make or a comic book creator, make sure that you know the images that you're getting from these these artists that you're paying um, are you know um, extraordinary, are interesting. Tell your story. Uh, if you have to, don't be afraid to to send a a thumbnail sketch. And I mean, this is how I work with your boy Zach. It's like, what's in your head? What is it that you're looking for? Because I'm working for you. And I'm not as close to this project as you are, so you need to tell me, like, give me an idea of what you're, you know, what you're thinking about. And even if it's just a stick figure layout on a page, that's helpful sometimes. And something like this is just a waste of, it's a waste of your splash page. So yeah, when I saw this, I went, all right, this was, a, you know, that the splash page, interestingly enough, is the rush job. When you know, a comic book really should have especially if it's 48 pages, four or five really memorable panels that you're going to take with you. And for something like, uh, you know, Batman Year One, uh, I have dozens of, of panels, of memorable panels that are done in a very simplistic style uh, that will immediately come back to me that I will recollect when I think about that book. Uh, it's not, it can't just be about simply telling the story. It, it really should also be about, uh, you know, uh, leaving an impression, right? Uh, so, Clint, that's not your fault. Uh, this story is uh, very well done, very well told. It's a story um, that is, uh, I would give to anyone. Like, this story is all ages. There's some action. Yeah, look, look, you know, there are piranhas in this. Uh, there's some piranha blood. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, people, uh, people do get hurt. Um, but uh, this is just a story about, you know, the... Uh, friendship of uh, friendship family it's about family i mean it, you know at one point this villain is just like look you know uh even even when it comes to family where's the exact line here uh it's pretty cool he's trying to psych he's trying to psych out uh the brother that he has captured and the sister has escaped and he says she will always choose her own survival even over her own family and he's speaking about these piranhas but of course he's also speaking about uh his sister joe and um uh, you know that's that's really really cool and and we're like oh well no she's a hero of course she's going to come in here again in a panel that <laughs> could have been bigger could have been more impressive could have had more impact uh, his the the expression of joy on his face oh how would i have redrawn this this panel would have been all of this uh this would have been a, a kind of a smaller inset uh, you know, the moment where she defies his garbage and rushes in for the, the rescue should have had more impact. Uh, that's, that's what I will say. Um, but having said all of that, and my complaints are entirely about the sort of blandness of the artwork. Uh, and I don't, you know, I, I don't want to go through and, and point out too many individual instances, but uh, just to just to get that across, it's like let's remember, you know, these a, a story is made up of of beats, uh, and visually, uh, you know, those beats some need to hit harder than others. So even if you're doing a, a page with one, two, three, four, five panels on it, it's clear that this is the big one. This moment needs to go boom like that with with its impact, and you can do that very easily by making it bigger. Uh, you know, the, the angle could have been better. Uh, the angle could have been, she could have been coming straight at us and stuff like that. That would have been great. 
but you know, look, here, here's the thing about this, uh, this comic book. As far as I know, this is Clint Stoker's first comic, and Clint can write. Look at the prospectors here, this ad for the prospectors. Like ghostly Indians fighting, uh, I guess, the prospect. Oh, the prospectors! Ghosts! Oh, I get it. Uh, oh, that's great. That's actually very clever. Um, yeah, this is Clint's first book, and it's really, really good. It's well written. Uh, I, uh, I have to say... Uh, I am very impressed with Clint's ability to tell a story, and his dialogue was sharp. Uh, I believed these characters. It, it was, uh, it was, it was good. It was very, very good. Can it be better? Yes, Clint. It can be better, and I believe that your uh, writing will improve over time. Um, I would say one thing that you should do as you hire more artists is maybe look around uh, and also take more control over them. And, and use that language, say, this needs to have more impact. This panel needs to be bigger. You can't let artists always have free reign, especially artists that don't have very much experience uh, at, at comic books. And I don't know if this artist has uh, very much experience, uh, but I will tell you that um, from my standpoint, there, there's some kind of rookie errors in here uh, for the artist. Uh, all right, thanks for listening, everybody. Let me know if you got downcast, what you thought of it in the comments below. Um, thank you again, Clint. I, you know, I honestly, uh, it was an honor to uh, have you on the show and promote this book. I'm really, really proud of Comicsgate, uh, and yeah, we need to we need to learn from each other. Uh, we need to improve, and uh, that's I think that's going to happen. Really, really proud of just the end results of how these books look. I, th I think it's great. So I'm going to be reviewing. Let's see, I'm also going to be reviewing Black and White by R.T. Bear. Uh, I got Jawbreaker's God King, which I'm going to save for a finale. Uh, that's that's a big deal. Uh, I want to promote that one. Uh, and I believe the Diaz brothers sent me a copy of Magic Cop. So I'm going to open that up as well. Am I forgetting anyone? Okay, I think those are the five books. I just reviewed Nassar. I think those are the five books that I have right now. And uh, I'm just going to review them all. And if I get any more uh, of my... Uh, Comics, the books that I back from Comicsgate, I'll review those too. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you again soon.